to everybody and um, welcome to um, our Soundbites webinar. And I want to say it's a real pleasure uh, to be sharing the first of our season two Soundbites connecting, Na uh, connecting with NAL um, webinars with Sherry Lee Rutherford and the IDA Institute. Uh, Sherry Lee and I have known each other for about five or six years when we worked together on a number of different things in the UK, both professionally in terms of different activities, but also on patient centred research. And so now Cher is in South Africa and I'm in Australia. It seems particularly special for us to be hosting this first collaborative international soundbite webinar from the same, same hemisphere, but at opposite sides of the world. So today's session is focusing on research that I and colleagues have and are doing in collaboration with the IDA Institute and where we have in the past received um, IDA Institute research grants and we've just recently got one from the um, from the Institute. And I'm going to be talking about this in the context of the Connected Hearing Health Research in now. So first on is a project that um, was led by one of my colleagues, David, Dr. Maidman, who's at Loughborough University in the UK now, um, which used the IDA Institute's Why Improve My Hearing Tele care tool and this is a tool that's um, delivered prior to the hearing assessment appointment and um, so I'll be giving the results of that study and secondly my colleagues at NAL, Tegan Young, Liz Beach and myself recently um, received an IDA Institute a research grant to use the My Hearing Explained um, tool and I'll be talking about our plans for that research. So this is a new set of webinars, so what's new? So other than the collaborative nature of working with leaders in the hearing health um, care field, um, the, the event is live and we want it to be much more interactive. So there's going to be a couple of polls um, and a Q&A in the middle of the uh, presentation and also at the end. So um, we would really, really love to hear from you. You can give questions as you go along and don't be shy. Please, please join in. We really want to uh, share this event with you. So we're really excited to uh, be kicking this off and I'll now hand over to Cher, who will give a brief overview of the IDA Institute. So over to you, Cher. Thank you so much to, to Mel and everyone at NAL and the Soundbites team for inviting us um, and for inviting Ida to join you on this um, webinar. And we're just thrilled to join you and we're excited about the friendship that we have with NAL. Um, and of course, we're very excited about the work that we are all doing together. So I will say just a few words about uh, introducing the Ida Institute. Um, for anybody who may not yet be aware, IDA is a nonprofit organization that was established back in 2007. And our mission is to build a community that embraces person centered care and empowers people to get the hearing care that they need. And at IDA, we thrive on collaboration, and co creation is at the heart of everything that we do. And so we enjoy and we prefer to work with people, uh, professionals, um, academics, and persons with hearing loss to co-create uh, innovative solutions, tools and resources um, in hearing and in, and in communication that helps us to make the care that we deliver more human centered. And so the resources um, for person centered care involve clinical tools, telehealth tools for clients and patients, professional development tools, and of course, ethnographic videos. And so if you're not yet familiar with the tool section on our website, you can visit idainstitute.com um, and you can feel free to get lost in, uh, in the myriad of tools um, and resources that are available. Um, the IDA Learning Hall is also something worthwhile visiting. Um, it is our free e-learning platform um, where we've co-designed um, training courses and educational materials with collaborators from all around the world um, to help you on your journey to become a more person-centered clinician. Um, and these courses um, are accredited by the leading accrediting audiology accrediting bodies around the world. So. Um, that could be worth your while exploring as well. And then finally, um, another thing that we do to support the development of person centered care further is our research grants. Um, so IDA um, provides three uh, re small research grants to recipients every year. And we do that, <coughs> excuse me, to 
further support the development and the evidence, um, specifically in audiology and hearing care. And so, um, of course, that's also going to be the topic of our discussion today, um, where we're going to be talking a little bit more about the tool and the research that now is going to do to help us develop that evidence further. So with that, thank you so much, um, Mel, again, for, for the very kind invitation, and I'll hand over back to you. Okay, so I'm going to uh, move on to the uh, first presentation end. Um, given that the uh, one of the studies is about telecan, we've seen a huge increase in the in the use of tele teleaudiology over the last um, seven to eight months as a result of the COVID pandemic. Um, I just wanted to give you a flavour of the kind of technology that we're looking at at NILS Connected Hearing Health Research Programme. So we're looking at a whole um, range of different um, types of tech, but today we're going to particularly be focusing on um, pre-assessment and free pre-fitting um, preparation. But when we're thinking about uh, delivering healthcare, it's not just about the tech. We need to think about how this fits into uh, the patient pathway. So this is um, so this slide here gives um, an overview of the research that um, we're doing it now. And what we really want to be to do is to maximise the um, impact of the research that we're doing for patients and audiologists. So we want to find out what it is that they want, and we want to find out what works. So we've got a couple of projects um, sitting in the health service research area. So one is looking at barriers and facilitators to connected hearing health with the aim to the aim was when, when we did it to try and um, increase uptake. But of course, seen a huge uptake over the last uh, few months. We did another study um, also on the back of COVID looking at outcomes, clinical outcomes for in-person versus remote services. And with the, with the name being to minimise face to face um, um, uh, clinic appointments um, and down the bottom, we've got two of our sort of technical innovation developments, which um, have a very much a patient uh, focused um, uh, feel about them. So one is looking at uh, pre assessment where we're looking at preparing patients and audiologists before the hearing assessment appointment, and then um, a study looking at um, post fitting to improve support and to increase motivation. So when we are thinking about person-centered care, this is how often how I think about it. Um, so we have um, the audiologist and the patient in the clinic, and both of them, when they are at the assessment or fitting appointment, have got different um, thoughts in their head. So with the audiologist, it might be they're thinking about getting the hearing aid fitted in the short time that they have. For the patient, it might be around wanting to tell their story. And so when we think about person-centered care, we're thinking about sh a shared understanding of needs, desires and interests. And we're looking for a collaboration between the um, audiologist and the patient. And that um, really is the sort of where we're getting to with um, patient-centered care. So with the the first study that I'm going to talk about, this is um, a study, like I said, which we um, carried out in the UK. And we were looking at assessing the Why Improve My Hearing Telecare tool. And the idea was that we wanted to encourage patients to reflect on their own individual needs and abilities, but before they came in into the clinic, to make them better prepared to work more jointly, uh, more closely with um, audiologists, and making sure that things that are important and relevant to them are, are addressed. So. The study that we carried out was a mixed um, method study. So the first part was a randomized control trial where people were um, randomized either into the why improve my hearing uh, tool um, along with standard care or they're in the control group with standard care only. And it was quite a large study of 57 um, um, adults with hearing loss. At the end of the study, we showed that there was no significant in the outcomes at 10 weeks. We had a whole bunch of outcome measures, uh, but we did see that see a significant increase in patient readiness. So their readiness to do something about their health. And we saw a 10% increase in the um, why improve my hearing um, group compared to the control group. But probably what was more interesting from this study was that we also did some um, qualitative semi-structured interviews. So we did this with 10 um, adults with um, hearing loss and five audiologists. And the idea was to explore the views of both patients and audiologists towards the tool when in the audi audiology. So this is work that was done by um, David Maidman and Edna Hessen and, and myself. So from the qualitative um, research, there were three overarching themes. One was that the tool helped patients to prepare uh, for the clinic appointment in advance. Um, it helped enhance discussion between the patient and the audiologist. And we also had some signs that this had the potential to influence outcomes after the appointment. 
So looking at the first theme being better prepared. So people um, reported that they'd be that the tool helped them to become more aware of the difficulties they were having and sort of had that gave them a bit more of an idea of what they wanted out of any rehabilitation. And it also helped patients who were unaware or in denial of their hearing loss. So one of the uh, quotes was, you almost have to be confronted by the problem to take it forward. We also showed that um, it the, the tool helped enhance patients' readiness and motivation to engage with um, adult rehabilitation and encourage people to think about um, specific difficulties. So this audiology said the motivation from the tool is that it encouraged patients to take control of their own hearing health and not just be passive. So moving on to the second theme, which was that the tool enhanced discussion between the patient and the audiologist. So um, there were reports that uh, the tool helped imp improve the flow and the efficiency of the appointment and also helped to um, give an idea about what to expect in the appointment. So this patient said it gives you the agenda. I knew what the discussion was going to be about. Knowing it made me relax more. And as I mentioned, patient-centred care earlier, it made the appointment more patient-centred for both the patient and the audiologist. So we want this and it helps support the audiologist in understanding the needs of the patient. So I got a lot out, out of the patient and it was more personalised for her. So really tapping into that person-centred approach. Um, finally, in terms of outcomes, um, there was a suggestion that this may have the potential to in influence uptake of hearing aids, but also to improve um, outcomes after the appointment. So this audiologist said, I'm not sure she would have been so enthusiastic about trying hearing aid if we had not used this tool. It helped her to come to that decision herself and talk herself around to the idea that hearing aids would be beneficial for her. So it really helps patients sort of get more control over their hearing health care. OK, so what are we doing it now? So um, in terms of uh, what patients um, and audiologists want, this is reflected in NAL's approach to innovation and tech development. So I'm going to just move on to some work we're doing on, a, on, on some pre-assessment work. So um, we're using this sort of model work which involves design thinking and lean startup and agile methodology. So in the beginning with design thinking, we're thinking about what is the problem to the patient? So um, what are the um, issues? What is it that people want? So that's the empathise part of it. In terms of defining um, what the um, what the um, issues are, what they might look like, what the focus might be, that's the next stage in the process. And then the next stage is to um, start ideating, to think about what kind of solutions or features might address the particular problem. And once the design thinking phase is over, it's, it's time to move on to um, the startup phase. And we use um, this sort of build, measure, learn, um, approach, this lean startup approach, which uses MVP. So some of you may have heard of minimal viable products, which is basically the sort of bare bones of a, a means to be able to identify what kind of features people want. And having done one MVP and learning what it wants, it's an iterative process which can go through a number of times. And the study that I'm just going to talk about in a second is on its fifth and final MVP. So we're really getting a good idea of what it is that um, patients and audiologists want. And then the final stage is the development of whatever the tool is going to be. So maybe the development of an app, or maybe the development of an online tool. And um, this sort of agile sprint uh, process is the process that we're following in now. So what do clients and audiologists want? So this is a study that's being led by Jeremy Pang in the bottom right of the slide. And what we've seen in the discovery phase is um, that clients are saying that they want to be better prepared. and to um, be able to have more of an expectation of what they want from the hearing journey. So this is very, very similar to the um, study I was talking about um, a minute ago. Uh, but what also has come out of this study is this um, theme of trust, this idea around personalised and self-paced paced patient education um, to really sort of try and facilitate um, acceptance. In terms of what audiologists want, again, they want to be better prepared. So it's obviously a really key theme here and to try and understand the client's motivation. So again, we saw this in the uh, UK study. But what also came out in this study was this idea about developing and building rapport. So clients don't always know what they want to ask and having some sort of um, information beforehand can really help build rapport. And where we're at with this study is that both clients and audiologists want to be better prepared and enter a productive relationship built on trust and rapport early on in the um, hearing journey. 
So going back to um, where we are at the moment, we've done the discovery phase. We're in the final stages of this iteration lean startup process. And then depending on where that goes, we're going to move on to the development of, of, of our tool. And I can talk a bit more about that later. So um, there's lots going on. Um, watch this space. It's probably time now to move on to the sort of second part. Um, of our um, session today where we're going to be talking about the My Hearing Explained and Cher's going to give a bit of an overview of that. So over to you, Cher. Thanks, Mel. And um, just while that presentation is coming up, that's wonderful. So the tool that um, we want to share a bit about today is called My Hearing Explained. And I'm just going to do sort of a brief overview of, of what the tool is and what it's intended to do. Um, and then Mal, I will hand back over to you and you can tell us about just the um, really exciting research that you guys are going to do at NEL um, and using the IDA grant to do exactly that. So the My Hearing Explained tool, um, if we go to the next slide, Slide. Um, it is a tool that is designed to uh, transform the complex information from a hearing test into language that is easy to understand. It's designed to help people understand the hearing loss and then also to enable them to explain it to the people that are important to them in their life. It's very much designed as a conversation tool um, and it is something that can be used as both a self-report tool and a tool to explain results. So if we go to the next slide. So what it is, it's a personalized infographic and it's centered around an illustrated head and it's surrounded by icons for loudness, clarity and brain energy. And so what you have underneath is a box that you can fill out with the patient where you're going to fill out what they struggle with and also what they can hear. And this here is interesting because we are trying to also maintain a strength-based perspective, which is very much in line with the principles of good information sharing. Um, and then there's also space to document the patient's most important communication situations. And then on the left hand side of the panel, as you're looking at it, um, the patient um, now has an opportunity to uh, indicate on the scale what their ability to hear sound is um, and what their ability to understand speech is and also how they rate their energy for listening. So this is the self-report part of it. So the patient can rate that. And later on, when you as the clinician are doing the audiological testing and the speech testing, you can also put your markings on there. And then there can be an, a discussion about how these might agree or maybe there's some interesting discrepancies and you can explain explore with them further why that might be. And then there's also space to document and things that you've discussed, all your different recommendations and the treatment options so that perhaps you've recommended some technology, assistive devices, different strategies, uh, referrals and so on. Um, and so this is very much helping the clinician to facilitate shared decision making, which is one of the cornerstones of uh, person-centered care. Um, and yeah, so if we go to the slide um, how it works pretty easy uh, you can download it again freely from the IDA website you can print it there's also an editable PDF if you are working remotely so you can do it via screen share um, and then you simply use the tool to guide your conversation in the appointment um, and importantly um, the tool has been designed first and foremost for the patient or the client so the idea is that they take it home as a um, as a document and as a summary of the things that you have discussed um, and the tool is, is intended for sharing so we should encourage um, our clients to take it home share it with their loved ones um, and have that conversation about hearing loss and how it impacts their life and also what they plan to do about it further and so on the next slide, um, our final slide here is just to say that um, I think or I hope it's clear that you can use this tool throughout the appointment. So you can use it during the case history phase and you can use it during the explanation phase and also the management phase of the appointment. And, and, and the real purpose of the tool is to facilitate a conversation um, and help people make sense of their hearing and then also enable them to share it with their families. And I think an important um, characteristic of this tool is that it demonstrates in a very physical way that you as a clinician have been actively listening um, and um, 
Yeah, so I'm going to hand over um, back to you now because um, Mal, because you are going to do some uh, amazing research on this tool and um, and help to provide further evidence um, to support the use of this tool. So uh, back to you. OK, uh, thanks, Cher. So um, yes, yeah, so we. Um with um, a couple of NAL researchers, Tegan Young, who's a research audiologist, and Liz Beach, who's head of behavioral sciences. And we uh, earlier this year, we were lucky to get an IDU Institute research grant. And the um, study that we're going to do is to assess the use of uh, the My Hearing Explained tool, um, with a focus being on to align communication strategies between adults with hearing loss and their communication partners. And the person who's uh, leading this research is up in the top right um, hand corner of the slide there. OK, so we've got a slightly shorter planning to communicate. This is the short title of this study. Um, and as, as many of, of you listening today will know that hearing loss affects uh, many areas of people's lives. It's not just about the hearing loss, it affects their communication, it affects their cognition, both of which are addressed in the My Hearing Explained tool, and it affects other things such as things like mental health. And we know that communication uh, partners are also impacted by hearing loss. So there's been quite a bit of research talking about third person disability. So uh, communication partners also can experience some of the um, psychosocial and other issues around hearing loss, such as um, stigma. Um, communication partners we know can play an enormous role in the success of hearing re rehabilitation and we know and it's been shown on in a number of studies and systematic reviews that by aligning strategies um, of the adult with hearing loss and, and the communication partners by joint working leads to uh, better um, outcomes in the end and people there's been some research um, done in other areas outside of audiology so in the field of behavioral insights and that research shows that people who share their intentions um, are more likely uh, to make the change and more likely to stick to them. So this is something called pre-commitment. So um, this is where it's really great working at now where we can bring together audiology, behavioral sciences and put them together and create really uh, novel research. So what we mean by uh, pre-commitment, I'll give you an example. Um, so this would be, for example, if somebody was uh, cooking dinner, so the communication partner was cooking dinner and the, the adult with hearing, hearing loss was eating their dinner, um, that when they were preparing it, they were very mindful that they faced the um, faced each other when they were um, having a conversation or if they went into the fridge and um, to get something out they would stop talking whilst they were um, facing away from um, their partner whilst in the fridge and when they turned back around again they could continue with the conversation so it's those kind of communication strategies we're looking at and what's really interesting <laughs> I only found this out uh, quite recently is that um, there can be sort of these um, sort of it can uh, can have these things around bets so you know to go and see whether people actually do what they say they're going to do um and so you can have a bet which is like you know if you do that you know i'll cook you dinner for the rest of the week or um what's been shown is that if you take something away from somebody that's more likely to be motivating um than if you give somebody something so maybe for example uh, taking away somebody's early evening gin and tonic if they don't do what they had agreed to do so these are the kind of things that we're going to be looking around the pre-commitment. So the actual study itself, the research question is, does the uh, tool facilitate understanding of hearing loss and lead to aligned communication strategy? So the key word here is aligned. So we wanted to go and assess whether the tool um, improves the understanding um, of the communication, improves the communication partner's understanding and, and in terms of their impact of the hearing loss for the person who has it and see whether there's going to be an improved understanding compared to the standard audiogram. We also want to go and have a look at the perceptions of hearing loss from both the uh, from both parties' point of view, from the person with hearing loss and the communication partner, and um, see how they intend to align their communication strategies um, depending on um, the discussions that they've been having. And then finally, to assess the value of the pre-commitment commitment and urging the setting of and subsequent achievement of the communication goal. So it's all around looking at goals, it's looking around the needs of both the um, both both parties um, who will be taking part in the research. So we're looking to um, recruit. Sorry, it's a bit slow. We're looking to recruit 16 dyads. So dyad is 
um, um, a couple, and we're going to randomise them into two groups. One group will um, uh, get the standard audiogram, the other group will have um, the, the hearing tested using the My Hearing Explained tool. Um, the results will be explained to the um, adult with hearing loss, and then there's going to be a discussion between the two of them in terms of the results of the um, hearing loss as to whether they got the uh, PTA or the My Hearing Explained tool. And together they're going to look to develop um, communication strategies. So there's going to be some discussion around that with the um, looking at um, developing a, a pre-commitment nudge. And then post discussion, um, there's going to be some questionnaires and a joint semi-structured interview um, four weeks later. And then finally, we're going to have a follow up interview to assess how well um, each of them or the, the, the couple um, are aligned in terms of their communication strategy and was the pre-commitment pre-commitment nudge uh, successful. So it's got some sort of novel angles to it in terms of the behavioural insights. And I think it's really important to see whether we can try and get um, um, uh, aligned strategies and outcomes better um, aligned between the two. So I'd like to ask you um, how you developed the tool, because I think you had a, a really mm. sort of a participatory approach uh, to that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that question, Mel. I think, um, you know, we we anecdotally have known for a long time and, um, you know, many clinicians, I think, will agree that we've always realized that the, the audiogram is um, is limited in many ways. But when we look at the audiogram as a counseling tool specifically and um, as a tool to um, help people understand their results, we, we had to do um, a little bit of field research. And so we've done quite a bit of um, surveys and interviews and focus groups in the run up to the development of the tool. Um, and I think what was super interesting, uh, we, we uncovered so many interesting things um, and that will be a talk in itself. But um, I think one of the most interesting things that we found is when we asked um, clinicians, um, are you interested in um, having a new tool or a resource available to help you explain the hearing test results. 99% um, of the respondents actually indicated yes. And so for us, that was a very strong motivator um, and, and a confirmation that we were um, on the right path with trying to innovate and, and find a new solution um, for talking about hearing test results. And I think the field research, also the interviews and the focus groups from uh, from different consumer groups um, that we ran, it, that they all confirmed each other, um, and there were wonderful comments from um, from consumers and clients who were kind of highlighting the limitations um, of the audiogram um, in terms of really understanding, you know, what can I hear. Um, and what is the functional impact of a hearing loss on my life? So, so we kind of had that confirmation from both clients and professionals that there's a gap. And so it's always nice when you're trying to design a new tool that there's agreement um, from both parties on that. So a very strong yes um, that helped us to, to move forward with that project. And thank you everybody for some of the comments that are coming in now. I just want to go and say um, a final thank you to Cher for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure as always to share the screen with you, Cher. And uh, thanks to the Soundbites team and thanks everybody for, for tuning in. Mm -hmm.